today, we stand at the dawn of the neuro revolution. Hi, Kickstarter. I'm Connor. And I'm Joel, and we're bringing you OpenBCI, an open source, low cost EEG system for makers. When you support OpenBCI, you get a Bluetooth enabled EEG system for makers. It's got to have an Arduino on board, and it's fully programmable. OpenBCI stands for Open Source Brain Computer Interface. We are dedicated to open source innovation of human computer interface technologies. I strive to support those who have an irresistible urge to understand and expand the extraordinary system that is the human brain. I focus to use technology to explore the limits of our consciousness in an ethically befitting manner. I strongly believe that an open approach is necessary on a voyage such as this in order for it to be done in a way that truly aids the development of humanity as a whole. I now encourage all of you to join me on this journey into the infinitely complex phenomenon that we know as the human mind. Thank you. When we started OpenBCI, the goal was to build technology really for the 22 year old version of me. You know, I was thinking about what it was like on my journey getting into BCI and how difficult it was to start making progress. The whole idea was really to push from the back and kind of like enable younger and younger people to start participating and driving the industry forward. You know, Connor went to every maker fair event for probably like a three or four year period, you know, and like just set up, bring a suitcase full of gear, get weird looks at the airport and, you know, like show people what it is. What we did right or what has led to OpenBCI's success has been making it as flexible and customizable as possible and kind of making it clear that, hey, you can buy these tools, you can get access to the source code, you can get access to the hardware designs and you can customize these and use them for your own projects. I saw some of the cool tutorials that they were pushing out and I became interested in learning more about the ethical approach that they were pushing in the neurotech space. I was already interested in getting into the space and I was working on side projects using BCI equipment myself. My favorite part of the job is finding an, a video or someone's project explanation of something they built with OpenBCI that I hadn't seen before. And I used to think I had seen them all and I've given up on believing that. I remember I found something from like 2015 of somebody, you know, taking a VR headset and combining EEG with it. And I think that was one of the first ones I've found uh, that used an OpenBCI for that. And, you know, kind of led to, you know, like early, uh, early adopter of, of what we eventually ended up doing ourselves with Galia. The first conversations that I had around building a AR or mixed reality headset coupled with you know, the sensors of an ultra cortex, really kind of like the, the first ideas of, of that were in Tel Aviv. I was hanging out with Yannick Roy from Neurotech X and my good friend, Daniel Goodwin, who just wrapped up his, his PhD. But we were just, you know, we were talking about these two emerging domains, BCI and virtual reality and how those trajectories or those industries were headed for a, like a crash, like a, like a head-on collision, right? Yeah. Actually, the same trip to Tel Aviv, I ended up meeting uh, Gal Sant, who is a, a, you know, was an individual with ALS who tragically passed away from the disease a couple of years after I met him. He was a huge inspiration for me because he actually, he was the first person to ever show real excitement when looking at the prototype of an ultra cortex. But most people were giving me the time of day, but then, up, you know, Gall, who's in a wheelchair, rolls up and his face just like lit up. Like I could tell, immediately I could tell he knew how important this is and is going to be. At that point in time, we decided, you know, we were gonna try to build Gall a custom ultra cortex where we can 3D scan his head. He was a software developer. He was already writing all of his own, uh, literally his own logic for continuing to communicate with the world. So he was a huge inspiration. He's also uh, a big reason why we called Galia Galia. And Gaul, which I always thought was really poetic, means uh, wave in Hebrew. I have this breadboard here. It's one of the first versions of Galia, uh, where we were trying to communicate with all the sensors at the same time. As you can see, it's pretty messy because we were prototyping, but it's really nice to see how we go from this to the device that 
people are now wearing in labs and producing content with. These ones, we've, you know, we've taken some of the hoods off to, to get a little bit, uh, you know, of an under the hood view. Uh, you can see here, we got a whole bunch of PCBs that are kind of riddled throughout uh, what we call the strap apparatus, which is the rear harness of the Gallia system. Um, it's a little bit harder to see on this version, but I took it out. And here we have the face pad. So this uh, is, is a really cool uh, uh, part of the system. On here we have uh, a PPG sensor. So this is measuring heart rate and heart rate variability. We have uh, an electrodermal activity network, or sometimes this is referred to as GSR or galvanic skin response. We have two EEG electrodes, so brain sensing electrodes, uh, FP1 and FP2. And then we've got um, four isolated uh, EMG measurements. So in this little region down here, we have uh, you know, two, two electrodes that we're looking at a potential difference across. Yeah. And so we're able to see a kind of isolated or localized muscle activity in this region. And then we've got one of those above and below each eye. And then the last piece of data in the face interface is uh, EOG or electrooculogram, which is electrical eye tracking. So here we've got uh, a horizontal EOG network, and then we have a vertical EOG network here as well. On the back of the headset, the only sensors that we have are EEG sensors. So here um, you can see that we have uh, custom active EEG electrodes that we've designed from the ground up, and they're really you know, designed specifically for this headset, though I think there's a good chance we'll end up making them useful for other tools as well in the future. But yeah, the Gallia system, you know, we, we tried to build the absolute workhorse of a neurotechnology super tool. Getting into that, there was just tons of details to look at. So we're looking to build something that fits everyone and everyone will enjoy wearing, which I think is a difficult thing to find in a BCI. I think one thing since I'm here in OpenBCI, what I've been doing is I've been trying to interface Dahlia mm. with existing hardware. Mm. So let's say a remote control car or a Hetzberg, attach a camera onto it, mm. stream the data into Unity, and then control it using your brain waves or your facial muscles or something like that. So that's something I've been working on and it's pretty good. We're also another cool project. I've been working with Ava, a software engineer here. Uh, we've been working on controlling a drone using Gallia. So that's definitely one of the, one of the cooler projects we've been working on. You know, there, there's so much power for the medical domain, assistive technology to turn disabled people, you know, back into able-bodied individuals, or at least try to bridge that gap to, to provide further autonomy and, 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 you know, allow people to stay individuals as long as they possibly can, right? But I think there's also, you know, there's also a lot of really amazing opportunities for um, the extension and aug augmentation of, of able-bodied individuals. Let's make sure we do it right, right? Like, and I think that's that's still a core to who we are is like staking out these, these areas or these territories in the future that we need to build guardrails around, right? And I think for BCI in particular, for neurotechnology, I, I don't think that there is a domain or an industry that we actually need to be more thoughtful about, right? And, it's, and, and that's why I love my job is yeah. because it's like, you know, and I think that's probably why you guys love your jobs too, is like you feel that purpose. You know that we're doing something very meaningful. So on that note, OpenBCI is what we do. Woo. This was a really special video for Colin and I to create because we both got our start in the neurotech field playing around with OpenBCI's hardware. And Colin was actually an intern for them back in 2015. So you can imagine that when they reached out to us last year, we were so excited to go tour their Brooklyn headquarters. And we actually visited the company at a pretty interesting time in their history because they were preparing to launch their Gallia headset. And this would mark a pretty big difference in the company's history. You see, prior to this, as you saw in the video, they created components of other systems, brain sensing boards that could be plugged into other people's projects. And that was cool, but to reach mass adoption of neurotechnologies, we really need a complete system that's easy to set up. And I think that's what they're trying to do with Gallia. And with the prevalence of metaverse technologies and the slow but steady adoption of VR tech, I think that OpenBCI is coming in with Gallia at a really interesting time. I'm excited for that future, um, and I look forward to getting to actually play around with these devices once they, uh, once we're able to get our hands on them. Um, so thank you again to OpenBCI uh, for having us out there. The team was wonderful. Thank you to all of you for watching, and if you like this type of content, go ahead and follow us and leave a like because we'll be producing more in the future. Thanks.
It's funny you asked, actually. <laughs> One of the first ways I got introduced is I watched BCI guys. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. I saw your videos, I saw your introduction videos, and I thought they were, you know, really cool.